What's going on, everybody? Hopefully, we're on time. See who's checking in here. Today, 3D Printing Sunday. We decide on a project. We're actually kind of continuing a project this week. But the point is to pick an item, walk through it in a 3D design. Most of this stuff is being designed in the terms that it should be 3D printed easily on most home printers, FDM style printers. So it's uh, that's the whole purpose of what we're doing. We're going to be using Fusion 360 because it's a program that's available for free in many places. I've linked to it in the description below. As far as 3D printers and things like that, I've got a link on my website, harleydesigns.com, with the printers that I use. But none of this is you know, anything special. Any run-of-the-mill FDM 3D printer is going to work just fine. Thanks everyone. Again, everyone's starting to roll in, check in, appreciate it. Yes, we're in work. It's been a busy day today. Yesterday I was out rock crawling. Today we were out drag racing all day. I got home just in time to get everything set up for the stream and now we're going to go. Tonight uh, we're going to continue the process of designing the Terra drop style trailer. We started it last week, kind of made a base, started working on some profile of it. This week, we're going to start with something like a, a simple camp item that we will probably use for the Terra drop trailer and then get back to work on the trailer itself. I didn't put any of the files out from last week yet because we're still in like the super early stages of design and a lot of it's going to change. I don't expect any of it to stay exactly how it is. So that's why we didn't put those out there. But that is that's what we have we're going to switch over to the other view we've got fusion 360 open already this is just a a blank document to start one thing that we do want to do like i was saying is draw trailer we want to pick some sort of generic camping item that we can we can use for it. So this is the the rough trailer design. I don't let's not do a roto pack yet. I mean that's an obvious one, but I'm just gonna kind of look here at any other items that maybe would be a good fit for what we're going to do. What about that? A little camp stove. That seems that seems like a decent one. You could do something like that. Let's let's run through and see if there's any others first. Oh, that one's so this one's got another style camp stove in there. I think a camp stove is a good idea. The small toolbox to the front, I think that's also a good idea. I saw that. That propane tank on the side. I got a bunch of stuff we can put on the inevitable roof rack that we add to this, but We'll get there eventually. Let's do that camp stove. So let's let's go back and find that photo. So we have that one or this one. They're pretty close to the same. Let's do this style. I like that one. And it's a very, I mean, this thing's almost a, a suitcase style. It's almost too basic. We have camp stove. Josh is ignoring our need. What are we, what are we seeing in here? That what am I not seeing? I should say. Uh, oh my, oh, yes. Images, camp stove. Some leveling jacks isn't a bad idea either. Small toolbox for the front. I think one of these is going to be going to be fine. I mean that one's orange. Keyboard why? Uh, so that's a second view. I needed to adjust the screen capture area for Fusion um, for another use on the side of my screen here 
and I ended up with this uh, blank square. So you either get a blank square or a keyboard. So that's what you get. That is why. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna test this out anyway. It's it's mainly so that I can actually see the chat a lot easier because otherwise I'm like looking up to try and read the chat all the time, and it's a, a huge pain. So I have a second window of the chat. I can bounce. It's gonna allow me to hopefully be a little bit more responsive to chat questions. Is why. So we are an experiment. You're always an experiment. We're just gonna go, all these camp stoves are just really basic, aren't they? I mean, this style of camp stove seems simple and easy. $45, the 3D printed ones would, you know, like when you see the people selling 3D printed accessories, they'd probably be just about as much as a real camp stove. Huh? So let's just make this. It's, this is going to be super simple. Make sure we're on the top. I want to make sure, yes, my document settings are in millimeters. I was working on another project the other day, and I wanted to make sure my, my settings didn't carry over. So we're going to make a rectangle. Then I drew a construction line down the center with midpoint constraints on each side and midpoint in the center. That allows me to make sure it all stays around the center. What's this thing? So this this one here shows that the product dimensions are 18 and a half by 11.8. So that gives us a, a good idea. If we want to 18 and a half, so 1.85 inches. 1.85 inches times 25.4, 47 millimeters wide is what we need to make this. And then it is 11.8 inches. Well, so we 1.18 times 25.4, 30 inches deep. Sorry, 30 millimeters. And then this whole thing is 4.8 inches tall. So 0.4, it's going to be about 13 millimeters. 12, 12 and change. And that's probably with the, with the lid when it's all on there, but just start with that and then we'll We'll work. We'll work from it. Don't forget you need to increase its size if you're building. Yeah, that's true in many situations, but also when you're working on things like a trailer, it's yeah, I, I'm aware of how the how this whole scale thing works. But for accessories and things like that, a lot of things like beds and all of those aren't all that deep. A lot of one tenth scale accessories usually are the best fit. So we're going to select all the corners, put a small radius on it. Three mil is going to be just fine. Let's throw out, this thing's got just a, a, just a rounded bottom like that. Now I'm going to do a sketch on top and we're going to hit E for, well, I don't even know if I, I can just do an offset around the outside and bring it inside. Uh, we'll do 1.6 mil, oops, negative 1.6. And then I'm actually going to, Finish that sketch first. I'm gonna. I did that bottom radius. I'm gonna move that out. We're gonna suppress that. I want to kind of work this as a shell first. So we're gonna go 11 in. 
Then I'm going to put a radius on both of those at the same time. That way I don't end up with thin spots. So we're going to do that. I think that this thing does look a little bit tall when we're looking at one half of it. So it's going to decrease the overall height by four millimeter. Now, I think the base of it, we can, what I want to decide is how much, how much of this we want to make in one piece. I'm thinking we'll kind of do this in multiple parts, but I'm going to make the bottom part as one. And then I think I'm going to make the burners and the grate possibly one piece. So we'll leave this like that. Let's actually do something. I'm going to create an offset plane from here, just a couple millimeters down. And then I'm going to make a sketch on that plane. And we're just going to, I'm going to do this to give myself a lip so that we can recess some items in. So, well, finish that sketch too quickly. I'm going to do alpha line X for construction. Give myself a mirror line. Windows. That switch to join. as soon as it interacts with anything, it wants to it wants to do a, a cut, but you just have to switch it to a join. But we're just doing something very simple like that to just give us a little area on the inside to mount things to, but also make it easy to print. All right. When I did mine, I included burners into the base, so easy to paint then, and the grill was separate, so you can print it in black or silver and save on paint time. I'm just batching stuff out. Yeah, I mean, you can, but I would rather do the bottom in one color and then just do an all gray burner and everything. And if you include the burners on the bottom, you can keep them close to it, reduce any support or anything like that. I think this would be the way that I would rather do it, keep it an easy print quality. So I'm going to select that plane. I'm going to hit P for project and I'm going to grab that whole top. That'll give me that line segment around it. Then I'm going to inset that by about a half of a millimeter. Then I'll, I'll select that hole. Why it doesn't want to select that line for me? Weird. I guess we could do this the, sometimes it wants to do things a little oddly. So let's just go up two millimeters. Make sure this is a new body. Then I'm going to hide the first body. Give me just the, the grill or the, oops, the grate. I think I've got a couple of sketches that got left in there, created by accident. So we're just going to create the uh, the grate section here. 
Let's go uh, negative 1.6 again. I'm doing 1.6 because most people are running a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on their 3D printer. So I'm trying to make sure that I do it in divisible, divisible numbers from that. Let's do this as a construction line just so that we have one right down the. And then we'll do 0.8 millimeters because that is going to be way we'll use our symmetry constraint I guess it doesn't want to do that whatever Make sure that these are horizontal. I don't know why they're still showing as blue. They should be. Hey, Matt's in here. I would turn the light back on, but uh, I left it on on Friday night and killed the battery. <laughs> Whoops. So rectangular pattern. We're going to select those two. Um, this direction. We're going to do that looks good we're going to select those two again again do the rec oops not circular pattern rectangular pattern again three at eight millimeter spacing Now we need to actually select the areas in between. Cut through. Since we don't have the other body shown, we don't have to worry about deselecting it in the items to cut on the right side here. We can just do that and it'll automatically do it. But that'll create our grill. This will be a super simple one to print. It's going to be pretty, pretty tight. Nothing to, nothing to worry about. You know, you could go finer, you could go narrower, just in general. I would try and print this in like a, a gray PLA or something along those lines. Now we can, if we do an inspect, we can select that bottom and then just the bottom edge of one of these. We've got five millimeters between them. So now that we have that info, I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom side of this. And then we're just going to create a couple of burners on the center line. And we're going to put it just right on the bottom, just because with a, an item like this, that's going to be just fine. Um, 12 is fine. Let's, let's keep it at 12. Define our spacing. Let's go 10 millimeters. Make sure that these are equal. I don't know what that why that sketch keeps popping up. I think that was one of those ones that I yeah. All right, now we just need to select all of those little areas. And then we, like I said, we have five millimeters, but I don't want to go down all the way to five. We're just going to go 4.5, give ourselves a five millimeter gap. Now, if you wanted to, something you could do is when you extrude that, we could edit feature, go new body. So they're not technically part of this yet. If we wanted, we could keep them separate. But what I'm looking at is I would actually print this whole piece upside down facing just like that. 
and then you just you're going to be able to print it fine i wouldn't print any support at all everything should print without any concern and to make it even easier and faster oops I would inset these, negative two there, <laughs> not know why it will. Two, then we're going to just Extrude those down, negative uh, three point, oops, negative 3.5. So it'll just make those easier to print yet. They're just less filament. What we do want to do is probably add a little bit of detail to those. So Wish we could see that a little closer. We're just going to put a chamfer around and some small features, kind of feature holes. So we're going to put a chamfer on those two edges. Small chamfer. Now let's put that body. Let's do what size fold do we want to put in that 1.5 mil. Maybe that's that's large, obviously, but to make things easier on your printer, it's probably going to be the best way to go. So I'm just creating some instruction lot or some turn that four mil up. Let's just go to one millimeter. It should most printers are gonna be able to do one millimeter without a problem. It's 4.25. Then we're gonna do a circular pattern. Object this center point here. Ten of them. That seems like too many. Let's stay with that. Lastly, line X for construction. Just create a mirror line. Select mirror. Select all our items. Mirror about. And now let's just extrude those through. Selecting all these holes is a pain. Cuts through all of them. How about one little one? Uh, no. Never mind. I was going to do one other thing, but I don't think it needs it. If you're having a lag, uh, just re restart your, your feed. It's sometimes it's been happening with YouTube lately, but usually that's all it is. So simple burners under the grates. If you wanted to get most printers would probably be able to do this without much of a problem. So I'm going to put small. Actually, I'm going to undo all those first. We're going to go in and I'm just going to. These are unnecessary details, but that's kind of what we do. We're going to go through and add an internal radius to all of these. I don't know why I kept doing that, just because I started that way. So we're going to grab all these to do an internal radius first. We're going to put a small amount of 
radius on all of these to kind of make it look more like a um, round tube rather than a square grate. Half millimeter. Okay. Then we're going to be able to select all of those profiles. And the outside one, and then let's just go a half millimeter. So see, that's going to make it look a little bit more like a, a traditional grate. Now I'm going to combine this body and these burners. Like I said, I would print these all as one. I think that's going to be an easy route to go. One thing that I did do is we had cut out the bottom side there. I'm going to, where did I do that? Right there, wasn't it? We're going to undo that. I'll show you why. So instead, what do I have that error on? Oh, that was the one I had suppressed. So I'm going to go on the bottom side. We're going to switch our visual style to shaded with hidden edges. I'm going to hit P for project. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab these two outsides and hit enter. Back to the bottom. And I'm actually going to change my visual style back instead. It'll just be easier. Since I did that now, I'm going to make a couple of small holes. These are going to be 3.2 millimeter. So that those are equal. Those are centered. And we're going to cut those up through just the outside pan. Like that. Hit OK. Do that again. Now we're going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the burners to give us a place to attach everything, but from the bottom, that way you don't have any visible hardware. You don't have to use, you don't have to use any uh, glue or anything like that. I would always rather, rather use a piece of hardware over glue. And we had four and a half millimeters, so we're going to go negative 3.5. You need a four or five millimeter screw to go in from the bottom, and then you should be fine. So that gives us this portion. We still need a lid and a way to attach the lid. So, oh, well, and this thing has splatter guards, right? So. I think we can probably get, I think we can probably get all of that in there. First, we need a top created on that and top hit P for project. Just grab that, which is going to give us a full lid. Go up five millimeters. Yeah. We're going to make sure that it's on new body rather than join. Make another sketch using that top. P for project. Let me just grab the whole thing. One last time. This time, though, when we go to extrude, we're going to select both and then go one point. 1.4 millimeter top spine. 
keep just that top put a fillet on the inside and out of one so now we have a simple top what i would like to do is add an easy method to hinge it and keep it in place we want to make it easily printable we're going to print both of these this one will be flipped over so we can use a little bit of support material on either of these creating it i want these bodies are all in the way i want to use offset from the side and just go like 12 millimeters over that seems fine So now we have it selected. This is going to be the plane we're going to design on. Basically, what we need we're going to do is make a, a hinge. So on the center line, we'll go, we'll create this a 2.5 inner. Um, five outer. It's a little much, but it's okay. I'm going to change my style to hidden with visible edges because I want to cheat this thing pretty close to that edge, to that wall. Actually, I could even be for project grabbing that. And then we'll just do a, we'll keep that wall tangent. I'm going to suggest that you use a set screw for this rather than the head of us that way you don't have a visible three millimeter screw head so we're going to do let's see i think i'm going to keep it at that first and then I'm going to go is it like four millimeters, five millimeters. Yeah. New body. And actually, I'm going to, I'm going to back out of that first. I'm going to hit P for project again and grab, grab this surface. There we go. And now I'm going to go here. So I just want to do that one. Negative five, new body. I'll show you why. Do that. We're going to do it again. We're going to grab that one. We're going to go five again new body so now we have two i made a mistake i went 2.5 on both i need to go 3.2 on one and then the 2.5 i can make easier Because I want one of them to be a slip fit and one of them to be the threading portion. Yes. Oh yeah, it was just it was just five, wasn't it? Negative five. But can I hit join? I'm gonna do new body just because I don't want everything to. I'll combine it manually like that. I know I'm. I 
ignoring the comments a little bit, but we're just going to get through this part first. And so I kept these two separate because they're each going to be separate halves of the, the hinge. I'm going to mirror those bodies, select those, mirror plane. That is the, which one is that? Y, Z plane. Now, if I combine the inner two with the bottom, and then the outer two with the top, let's So it gets a little thin. Well, let's change our direction just slightly. We're going to move it out a little bit further. We're going to remove that tangent. We'll slide that out. We'll go 2.25. And then I'll add the material in along the bottoms to kind of web it. We'll do that with radius tool like that. Something simple. I accidentally hit the wrong button. into grab that edge as well. I'm just doing that one for a do that manually. Now we can fill up the top side to tie that in. Just a camp stove, doesn't need to be. We got that. So now we have a simple hinge set up, and that top should be able to let's see if I if I make the rotation point Rotate. Here's the axis. Got that. This will allow me to. Do I have the right one selected? Nope. I don't. Body the top. So we have the. You can use the move tools to kind of check things if you want. Select the axis, which is this. And then you can just grab that and see. Huh? Now, one thing you could do is go to 90. Now, with it at 90, we actually have some interference there that we need to take care of. So we'll do that. I'll take care of the, the interference that we have. And we could also build in a, add a sketch, start it on that plane. And let's use P for project. I'm going to grab, kind of go down to this area, go vertical, 
I'm going to make these two lines tan a tangent on them. Just going to put a 0.25 millimeter tolerance. The reason I'm not going exactly on those is just because with 3D printing, I want to make sure that it doesn't like stay a little bit too close. I'd rather have it give it a little bit more than not enough. Four millimeters. So I'm going to do this. Carry it over about four millimeters, new body. And then I'm going to mirror that body. Now when it opens, it'll have a stop and it won't flip it. Flip it. it won't flip, pivot, past, flip it. Flip it is the word. Um, and the point, yeah. So what I would tell you to do is use a set screw through this rather than a, a regular button head screw. Just because it'll be cleaner, you won't see that screw. And it'll just kind of blend in. But what I do need to do is make that clearance area. I'm just going to do a small cut based on uh, this plane, but I think we'll do that. We'll do that later. I think this, uh, Josh, is the lid going to have a stop on it so it doesn't open all the way back? That's, that's what we just did right here. This little thing that comes down, that's a stop. So now this item rotates about that. That, see that back there? That's what's going to stop when it gets to that point, basically. So, let's save this one since we haven't done that yet. Oh, we, let's see, the only thing we didn't do, we didn't put any dials or what do you like uh levers on the front they're not levers it's just the dials right the knobs knob is the word i don't know i'm not allowed in the kitchen it's a self-imposed rule though We'll make them the same spacing as the burners were. These are going to need a little bit of support material when you print them. That's too far. We'll keep them simple. We'll just put a chamfer on the outside. Should we put a it's pretty pretty simple and a nipple for the propane hose? That's a good point. That would where would that normally be? Back, front, side they go uh, off to the side kind of needs a the legs or something underneath of it doesn't it I mean I don't want to make that on the one same print but the right side 
that's right, right? Is that looking down from the top? No, there's the, this one's on the left side. It would be, or, oh, that's from the bottom. Sorry, I'm looking at the this photo. Sure, some of them are the, I'm sure some are the same, some are different. We'll just. Go three out, offset a little bit, negative five. It's something on there. The latch, yes, we don't have a latch. But I don't know if we're going to do a latch. Um, yes, we are making something for the camper. I guess we could do like a, a fake looking latch. Um, Just so that when it is closed, it has the has the look. So we're gonna make the new sketch on the YZ plane, and let's just do one millimeter out. Use P for project just to grab a line so that I can make sure that it's collinear. That's fine. We're going to do a symmetric overall distance of 1.5. Oops. So I joined it when I did that rather than new body. And it combined our top and bottom. Some, something very basic, but Ooh, that's too much radius. And do that. Then I'm just going to mirror it to the bottom. That feature about that plane. So now they're both there. Now I'm just going to combine that with the lid and that one with the base. And there. You think we've got the, uh, the start of our camp. I can't stand these sharp points. Those are going to drive me nuts. So let's uh, bodies. We we'll do that one. Rotate it about that. Go to 90. So that's our basic camp stove with burner. Super super simple. And if you wanted, we could easily you could not combine these. But if, how small this is for a scale detail. I would do it. I think you could make it by color a lot easier, not have to worry about any painting. 
attach everything, the grate and the burners to the base. Super easy, no glue, nothing. You just be done and done. -er. The only thing we didn't do is we didn't do the little splatter guards, but we're gonna bypass that for now. So the only thing I have to do is I need to add the clearance for where these hinges are, but I'll do that after, before I upload. So let's look. Let's go a little bit into the comments. I'm, the only thing I'm going to do before that is some color, just because. Faces. I don't like having to paint things, but I suppose, you know, oops. Suppose even I would be like somewhat okay with doing the smallest amount of that right. Well, that's annoying. Whatever. So anyway, let's look at we'll hit save. I'll finish colorizing that later. But this is how I would print it red there and gray here and you would get enough shadow it would look passable it would assemble super easy and you'd be done oh, hd logo on the lid thank you alex let's do let's do that we could do it on the inside you know so you see it when it's open should we do it on the inside when it's open or i think that Yes, let's do that instead. HD text, we used impact font. Size, we'll do That seems unnecessarily big. Let's use it. Let's do an outward on this one, 0.4 millimeter. Should be fine. Done. Camp stove. See, no need to buy it when you can make it yourself. done and see instead buy yourself a cheap 3d printer I, I i'll give you permission you can download my files and send sell them to your friends until they wise up and buy a 3d printer as well oh wind guards splatter guards yeah whatever they're they you could do them but this is for little RC cars. Um, I don't know that we need that. Okay. So this is, and you know, I think we'll use this in the inevitable final version of our trailer. Speaking of, let's open that. What do we call it? Teardrop trailer. Thanks for making us all hungry. <laughs> so here is this one thing I did. I did do one small detail last time after the stream. And that was in the last stream the sides of these didn't go over the edge of the rail. I came in and modified them, dropped them down. So they actually, they go, so it kind of covers up the side of the rail. It'll make it look a little bit better. And then I modified the floor so that it also will match up. Inevitably, when we do all the connection points, it'll, uh, when you do all the connection points, then that will be, that will be helpful. 
we will try and make all the hardware hidden. I still have plans to try and make all of the items on this so that you could do a 3D printed like base or shell of the print of the trailer as well and then like skin it in styrene so you have something that looks way better than a 3D printed part. 3D printed parts also don't always look that great. They look like 3D printed parts. It's nice and it's super easy, but they still usually look like 3D printed parts. So if we can make the design so that in the end, it's actually going to be even better, perfect. But we'll also make it so you can just straight 3D print it and it'll be easy. Uh, so here's what we have. This is what we left off at. We have some very basic start to our suspension. It'll be kind of a trailing arm style suspension. We'll have a pivot up here that'll go through. It'll be independent. We'll have a, we'll probably just run a coil spring only that'll mount to the top side. It'll be pocketed down in so you can connect it easily and it'll go up into the trailer. Hidden, you won't have to, you won't have to hide a full shock. You know, for a trailer like this, I think that that will likely be fine. And then we'll, in the end, we'll make it so that the mounting of the actual wheel stub is something that you can do with a affordable part, like a Traxxas slash stub axle um, or something along those lines. I'm going to take a break for just a second to read the comments since I, I, don't, I didn't keep up with them while we were doing the camp stove. I just ran through that thing. So. Again, thanks for joining. Leaf spring. Yes, I, I think after this, I will also make a leaf spring version of the, the base. So something that you can bolt a set of leaf springs into it easily and have a different style if that's what you're after. But the first one I'm going to do is going to be for a trailing arm suspension because coils over leafs every day. Print some TPU leaves. Yeah, you could, but they, I would, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't myself. It's TPU is it's springy, but it's not the right type of spring usually for what you're, what this type of thing is. It's more rubbery than springy. And that's not what you want in a, a leaf. I think you'd be better off with uh, PETG over, over TPU for sure. I think you could, if you were going to use TPU, you could print more of like a, you know, like an actual, uh, there's some different types of springs that are that are like uh, cavities, and you could use those more for like a coil replacement, but not not what I've, not what I would want, not the not the best material choice. While it might work, it's just it's not the right choice I think for what it it would. Um, yeah, I mean I've seen 3D printed leaves. It's just I wouldn't use that material. Yeah, PET, I think PETG would be a much better material. It's got a lot more spring to it, but it's, you know, a lot, it's got the rigidity. Uh, let's see, I've seen scale leaf springs made out of a chainsaw spring. Yeah, what, I mean, back in the day when, before we could like actually buy leaf springs for, or before you could find many leaf springs for RC cars, we would make them out of the pull start coil spring out of lawn mowers. That was the the most typical one. But now it's like you can buy a a Tamiya leaf spring set or an RC four wheel drive leaf spring set pretty cheap. So it's you know you can do that. You can buy the shackles. You can buy everything. If you want to buy if you want to put leaf springs in something, I would just get a decent set of leaf springs. They're not going to be that much. And it'll it'll get you something get you something useful so this week we need to kind of attack something i think we should attack the looks a little bit i want to i want to see i want to see it kind of take some take form into something that's more more appealing you know it's like you always want to see it, it see it part, start to take shape so you, you feel more uh, you feel like there's been some some progress. So we could add, uh, we're going to make the door functional in ours. So we could at least do the cutout for the door. This one's, It's got kind of a funky cutout. Do that. We could start to add the outer fender shape. Start to do some of those details. 
we are going to make the back open up like this one but i think so i think we've got a little bit of that stuff to to start cranking on let's start by working on the door i'm going to just start with a rectangle myself and then i'm gonna i've got the photo above obviously you guys can't see the the photo but it looks like the top and bottom radii are pretty similar and actually they are pretty large um actually the default was 20 i'm gonna leave it at that now the backside one this is not like a that's not a single radius there's a tight radius and then a large sweeping radius into something that kind of straightens out. This this whole side, we've got another large radius down here. This is all kind of arced into an, I think there's one, two, maybe three, four radii along this full edge. So we can, Something I think we can do is we can ignore the smallest arc at the top and we can come back in with that. I'm going to create the main three that I feel are in there. I'm going to call the bottom one a tangent start, tangent to the start of the next one, chain, finally chain that one tangent there. I'm going to start by defining the lowest. We're going to make it match. This I feel like is a is going to be a much larger radius like 100 mil. Oh. Let's let's put a little bit of restriction on how while we're going to let this door go we need to make sure that we've got let's go five millimeters of clearance between the floor and the bottom of the door we've got a decent amount of headroom here let's go like we need some room for mounting of like the the roof rack hardware and all that that's going to be on there up here i think 25 is fine and lastly let's define this at 40. so like that radius size I think we're going to see something like that go I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to, we're going to put a small, we're going to put a straight in this. So I'm going to do that. And then this one, I think we'll just, cut through the wall and then that top radius we're just going to add in manually like that let's 
Sorry. Uh, can you download this after? Yes, the whole point of all of the files that we do is that you'll be able to download them. Uh, this one is like going to be a multi-week project. So we, I feel like if I if I put them out there, then you know early they're not going to be right. But I don't know. We'll we'll have a little discussion at the the end of this the end of this week's and see if you guys. I mean, I'll I'll post what we have. If you want to waste filament and like start getting a feel for it you just go go nuts so i put a little bit of a, a trim ring around this just for no reason whatsoever other than i want to just have a little definition yeah i never took any uh, i've never taken any drafting classes actually i i learned all my CAD modeling stuff on my own. I just, I wanted to learn it and I just, just kind of busted my way through it. I'm going to, this door is a little tall, so I'm going to go, I'm going to increase this one a little bit. In. So, I just, the proportions of this door, mine still looks a little bit tall. I think we're gonna we're gonna drop the the top edge down just a little bit more. Something like that. Yeah. Ah, that's better. I like that. Always feels better when it's got a door. So the next thing we have to decide is that I want to put the inner, I want to put a fender on it, both inside and outside. The bottom currently, I would print that with that portion flat on the bed. So I don't want to add an inner fender on that part of it. So I feel like, and rather than I'd like to make the inside of the wall flat as well so that I don't end up with, you know, so that I could print it flat and get a nice finish on the outside. We'll see how this all works out. But I think let's start by, by adding our fender. Maybe what we'll do is we'll try and make our fender the inner and outer will make it one piece. Then it'll kind of key together. We'll try and make it so that you put the, you know, fender and the side panel together, then kind of put everything else together and it all lock into itself. Make everything just a little bit more engineered. Let's see. Actually, we're going to undo that sketch. Instead, we're going to start on um, that plane. I'm using the project function to grab the inner shape of the fender that we created. I'm going to expand this a couple of layers. I'm going to go two millimeters in, and then I'm going to go let's go negative 2.5. We can work on refining the shape later as well as needed. But I'm going to expand this out, new body. I 
make that work. So currently we have a we have a bunch. Oh, I need to grab that profile down there. Hide the floor, add the inner portion of our fender. Uh, let's go 2.5 again. So that gives us a, an inner wall. Now you can you can see all of these these conflict points. Those are things that we're gonna work on. I'm gonna go So I'm just hiding body so I can try and see how much room I have here. And there we go. I'm going to give it a little bit more. So I just wanted to see a fender on it. I think that that's one of those items that sure makes a big difference. Just putting a chamfer on the leading and trailing edge just for a little bit of style. I'm not going to mirror it to the other side for right now. Just since we have to do all kinds of work to it, I don't want to have to just keep mirroring it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think that looks a lot more like a trailer already. So these also have this little front cavity on them. Well, some of them do, some of them don't. Interesting. I did not know that. We have things. I think we'll add it to ours. I think it actually it looks good. We maybe we'll do two versions. Maybe we'll have it on one and not on the other. I don't know. We'll get to that point. Obviously, it's a, it's one of the option things. Let's take a break for a second and read through all all the comments. Or not all, not all the comments, obviously, but. Uh, well, actually, it looks like most of the top, mainly because I'm working on this and not uh, not reading the comments as much. Obviously, uh, the the side conversations in the comments are <laughs> running wild. Let's. I was looking for the the next big thing to work on. I want to keep knocking out major features, and then we go back and make sure that. Nothing collides. Everything functions. Everything opens. Everything is constructible. You want to make sure that you can fit all the pieces together, you know, and actually then be able to attach everything, not, you know, trying to build something inside of something else that when it's just not possible, you're, you're screwed. The roof, the roof rack. I, I feel like the roof rack may have to be one of the end. I'm thinking that the, uh, the rear hatch, we should kind of look at getting that in there so that we can look at these inside cabinets. Make sure that we have room and that, you know, I don't know that the inside cabinets will have much depth, but I want to make sure that there's still something there. So 
So let's uh, let's cut this rear hatch open. Let's make it let's make it something to to look at. I'm just trying to find myself a picture. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna make a sketch on that plane. Looking at this photo, uh, it's like the that hatch isn't all the way at the top edge. It's it's just a little bit down. So we need to make sure that we kind of start our websites that won't actually let you zoom in. Always reconfigures. So yeah, we need to start our cut for it just after the radius return. So we've got, I'm going to grab the profile, the outside, and I'm going to hide it. About this one, hide that too. Okay. So just after the radius, we'll start there. And it goes about midway down the rear. So Maybe we'll just take it at the midpoint. Midway. So then let's correct. Of course, doesn't want So we're going to do a symmetric total length and it pretty much goes the full width of the trailer. It really only leaves the wall, you know, the outside, the outside wall. Let's see when it happens when it's open. Yeah. So if we do that, we're going to create separate separate roof, a separate sock, that's fine. We can do that. That's, that's reasonable. Make sure that we're only cutting the one body. We are So now we have a big old hatch open. So we've made yet another hole in our we're making more holes in our trailer than we are closing things up this weekend this week. That's that seems backwards. So Let's make up for it a little bit. Let's work on that shape of the rear kitchenette. Do I keep saying roof? I, I know. A roof rack is what I say weird. Ru roof rack. Roof rack. Roof rack. <laughs> oh, uh, don't forget the roll of TP. Those are paper towels, sir. If that is what you're using, I feel bad for your treat yourself. Charmin, just, you know, get extra soft, treat yourself, or wet wipes, I mean, really go, go nuts, go wild. Okay, let's create our, let's create our area of, for scale food preparation. 
we need to make sure that our little scale camp stove will fit in here, right? And isn't that where somebody had it? What I think would be the most helpful is if, if Teradrop went ahead and sent me one of these trailers and I could just go ahead and go ahead and uh, model it after one of the real ones. I'll, I'll put my address in, you know, description. You can send it there. Yes. Oh, theirs is, this is fancy style. Theirs actually hinges out of that, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think we're going to go that wild. I think we're just going to make sure that our other 3D printed camp stove can fit there. Because that is crazy talk. Okay. That is the photo that I'll be using for reference. I'm going to build off of that side wall. We're going to start at the. I'm going to grab these two profile, create that. I am going to hide our fender for now. We're going to straight down, straight over. Let's see how much interference we're going to have. Ooh, look at that. We're going to get pretty close to our fender opening. I may have to adjust our cut on the uh, this lower side up just slightly. Nicole is home from her swimming. Hello, Nicole. I am li I'm live streaming. Let's just keep it cool. Nicole is home, everybody. Say hello to Nicole. There's that. Yeah, I think we're going to adjust this rear cut up so that we don't interfere with that fender. And make sure that that's a new body. That would give us plenty of room. Now I could, I went ahead and created that, but I'm going to go to the cut sketch that we made, and I went with the midpoint four. I just deleted that constraint, and then currently that was at. That was at 48. I need to take it up. Let's go to 53. And now we've got a little bit of room. I can maybe even go to 52. Yeah, that'll work. Everybody says hello, Nicole. She gave me the, I'll tell them hello. <laughs> That's a nice interior piece, but can I still fit my sandwich in there? I, things are going to get tight. Maybe we'll make this easily removable. You'll have the option. Full-size kitchenette or sandwich packing. I'm going to open the appearance model, duplicate one of these edit it, select another color. Um, get to that. So just putting some colors on there so we can see which things are separate. Now, what was, how big was our camp stove? With it open, inspect from front of knob to back 40.65. So it's 
So if I I'm going to go this profile. I'm just looking at creating the upper cabinet area. Seems like we're getting awfully fancy, but that I said 40.65, so 45 is good. And we can go, it's 50, mm, that's too much, 50. Probably go 50 here, even. Or So that's still our lower cabinet section. I really want to see the faces of my coworkers when I use 3D printed trailer as my lunchbox. <laughs> Why is there a toy in the fridge? <laughs> I feel like that's a conversation that parents have to have sometimes. Let's see, technically, what was, how tall did I just make that? 46 millimeters. Man, technically, I think we could fold our camp stove out of there. That seems like so much extra. Um, can I... Is it an assemble? I can't remember. Why can't I remember how to bring in other items? Creates a component or converts existing bodies. Insert, insert dry. That's what it was. Camp stove. That's it. That one. So Can I create, move to a group? Oh, wait, I need to, no, create a new group for these. No. Yeah. Either way. And so, told you one, no, that, this whole trailer is one tenth scale to the rest of the to the, the trailer's one tenth scale, this is one tenth scale. That that's actually looks about proper. See, so one ninth scale would would not have actually probably been the right call. One tenth scale is the right call. So because this one has like another another opening and then a small sink, which we should let's cut the sink in. Okay. Well, I have pizza coming. 
she's the best. Um, Let's go. We need room for the faucet, right? Hmm. 40, sure. Oops. We'll have to put a sink basin in. Doesn't matter, we'll scale it up. Trailers are too big anyway. Oops. This is an unnecessary area to really uh, start on, but I think we'll add that. Could push it. I need to scale. I need to put that closer to the center. So I'm tempted to actually make this thing hinge off of our opening. That'll probably be at a later thing. Maybe I'll screw around with that. Uh, is that ba is there bacon on that pizza? No, there is. I'm getting pineapple and barbecue chicken with not pineapple not pineapple jalapeno and barbecue chicken that's the best pizza there is all right um i'm not going to go through and add all of the actual cabinets and stuff but i could add at least the I could add some openings for now, right? Just to give us something to stare at, look at while this, we're gonna select the bottom three lines and then hit the collinear. Do the same with the top. I'm going to make sure that I've got five millimeters everywhere so that I don't end up with really thin walls, make it easier to print. Better rigidity, rigidity. These could even be Let's stay with six on those center ones. And then we'll use the collinear a little bit again, just to make sure that these are the same. This one will probably make a drawer. Stay with five there. And lastly, on this one, 50 for that one. And... I should match. I feel like that one should match the sink more, but that'd be right. Pineapple on pizza. Yes, that is. I I said it because I was thinking of the whole pineapple on pizza thing, but not because I actually. I'm I'm not a fan. Nicole likes it, so you can call her a commie. So, but like <laughs> Jr. Lawson, five bucks. Can't wait to print this trash. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jr. See, we're only an hour and a half in tonight. We already have more of a trailer looking trailer and we have a, a camp stove accessory.
what goes up top. Uh, up here, um, I don't really know. Right? Let's see, does anybody have anything up there in any of these? That guy's got a can of something and a box of something. We could handle that. We could handle those scale accessories. Do I have a cat? I do have a cat in here. Not Sookie, though. Safi instead. Come on. Come on. Come on. She listens like 4% of the time. She's also very dramatic. <laughs> More the uh, shop is a snack shelf, shelf snack, snack shelf. Yeah, I can't actually see. I mean, I'm, I would find things to put up there, RC car parts, bacon, barbecue chicken, or onion. The axle setup, that is something that I, before I refine a ton on that, that is something I definitely plan to get the parts for uh, before I really dive fully into that thing. Oops, sorry. Let's see. What should we? Let's pick another. Let's pick another feature to to work on, like a, a major type feature of some sort. We could start the door. We could. Man, why didn't I go with that door? Square door. What, do you guys like that square door better? Or do you like the squished egg? I don't know. Are there doors on both sides? There are doors on both sides. So um, I will, I need to copy all the cuts from one to the other, which is a pretty, pretty simple process. But we could do that just to make sure that we, I'm gonna hit project. I'm gonna go in and just, actually, I'll select that one shape that'll bring it down over there hole we've made a hole see the front box oh we could do the front box oh, sorry. oh let's see there we go squished egg for the win all right we'll stay with the squished egg Ooh, someone likes to score Boys, Bose noise canceling headphones, so I don't have to listen to my girl. <laughs> uh, the STL will be free. Yes, all of my files are free. I do not charge for any of my files. You can have any of this stuff that we do on live. Um. The propane tank you could build. Uh, I want I want to do like those little things like that at the beginning of the stream. So not, we're not just always working on these this huge, big, long, elaborate, ridiculous project. Um, I want to like that propane tank, perfect little one. We'll just knock that thing out super fast next week and then get back to work on this. Uh, the bed. I think that the bed might be another good like starting project for one of the days because we could make it that's something i don't well we'll have to see i've never done like the organic shaping so we may have to work with like uh we'll do the the mesh surface scene try and pull some lines and then use the uh the push pull methods to try and make it look a little bit more organic um we'll see i've never done that before it'll be an experiment for all of us Everyone has to make the bed out of foam. It, that that's a possibility. Uh, functioning canopy top. That's actually a really good one. We need 
Well, I don't know if this is what you mean, but do you mean the rear hatch? Because we definitely need the rear hatch. And that is something that I feel like we should work on. So if that's what you were suggesting, I think you're right. If it wasn't, take credit for it anyway and move along. So grab that and offset it. What did I have thickness wise? I was only at three millimeters. It'll be all right. Oh, I was not at three. Oops. What was I? Negative 3.2. I don't know why I didn't have a, a number in there that made sense, but we're just going to choose one. And then I'm going to give myself like a half a millimeter of gap just so that we have some tolerance. Obviously, I'll move our propane tank or our gas grill. I don't know why it doesn't like that. So here's another thing. When we're doing this, I want to, at the start, I don't want to start at that edge. I want to do an offset plane. We're going to do half a millimeter. So that gives me that half a millimeter gap right there. See? Then... Since it was 140 millimeters wide, I believe maybe it, maybe it wasn't. Let me actually I can just measure that line. Yeah, 140. So I went 139, which should give me half a millimeter at each side. I can double check with the inspect tool again. Yep, half mil. So now we'll have the rear, the start of that hatch. We will need to come up with a hinge. Yeah, piano hinge or something like that. I will try and make it again. Most of this stuff I want it to be just like 3D printable so you don't have to buy things. You know, so I'll, it'll, I'll do it like a piano hinge style, though. I think that's, you know, it's it's one of those things. Like, we'll try and make it. We'll try and make it simple. Printable, simple. I may make it so that it doesn't actually take hardware. It just takes a, like a, some sort of pin or metal pin, something like that. That something easy that maybe you can cut a coat hanger piece and then just slide it through. So you have a, a nice metal rotation point. Um, brake lights and funny license plate. I think the brake lights is a great idea, or you know, the, the cutout for it anyway. They just the rectang rounded rectangular style. Yes, they are. Okay. Make our cutouts for that. We're gonna have to make the actual brake lights themselves separately, or you know, night. Yeah, using uh, using axial light buckets would be the preferred method. I think what we'll do is I'm going to throw a 
placeholder design in here. Um, for now, at least. Do I have, does this thing have rounded rectangle? Slot is what I want. Um, I'm going to throw these in here for now. But I would like to, to look at making sure that I make them to the same size as the axials. So that if you have those light buckets, you could drop them in. But we'll also make a printed version of them. I could have done all this and mirrored it instead, but whatever. Um, currently, these are definitely too big, but it's going to work for now. Um, you just define the height. Actually, I'm going to use create a line so that I can center this instead and put a point on line at let's put the point on the line anywhere then we'll select the point select the line and hit midpoint it'll move the it to it then I can select the point select our side to side line and use midpoint there now it puts it properly in the center save good always always a recommendation worth taking these are definitely not the right shape they're too long they're probably too big but they're a placeholder for now a license plate mount is a good one as well i need to look at do i have an element thicker sheet here i don't think i do or maybe I do. I have an element builder's kit box. Yikes. No idea where it's at right now. I'm going to look at that later so that I can... I'm going to try and find the size of the element license plates, and then I'll make it based on that. We'll do that one later. We'll make a nice, make a nice mount. think I want to create the area for the hinge at this point at least just because you want to be able to rotate that thing And I want to be able to rotate it properly. So, so I drew this line so I could find the midpoint. And then I'm going to select that line and that one and make them perpendicular so that I've got that hinge point in the center. Make sure everything is set as a construction line. Now I can adjust that distance from here. Let's do, this is kind of just a placeholder for now anyway. I'm going to do it as a new body, just like that though. And then I'm just going to attach, attach it to the top right now so I don't have a body floating around out there. That may stay, that may go. Will you put the giveaway link in the description? I'm lazy. I should do that. It's actually a thing I should do anyway. So I'm going to select that body, hit rotate, and then we're going to select the axis. 
but now so you can see here when you rotate about that point we have obvious obvious collision issues but those are those are good reasons to do what we just did i need to make sure that is the hinge not an asset yes uh it all needs to get moved in a proper it's like i said it's kind of just a placeholder for now i just wanted something so i had an axis to rotate it on like it is definitely not what you want don't worry i just don't want to i don't want to look at it when i have it like that <laughs> for now we'll fix it don't worry it'll get there i'm just trying to make this thing look look appealing right now because the further and further we get things like this i think it just makes you want to do a little bit more that's why i suggested piano hit. yeah no i think the uh i think that that type of of hinge will work i just don't want to buy one you know instead well we will i think do that style down that that area i think that it'll be printable enough it'll be it'll be something that we can get strong enough to work most of it is just we don't want people to have to spend money to print these things too much like as anywhere where we can reasonably i want to do that that's why we're doing like this style suspension first otherwise the uh, a leaf spring style is probably the you know where, where you purchase a leaf spring and an axle like probably the best way to go because you'll get something so solid you know, solid not like it's gonna perform great but front window skylight do they have a front window did i miss that completely oh underneath of the roof rack rough rack roof Yes, let's let's put a hole in the roof. Seems like a terrible place with a roof rack, but so let's put a hole here. Um what size are R V what do you call that skylight or vent skylight vent perfect what size are these things let's go yeah. what's this one here i like that one this size is a shitty ebay listing read full description 14 by 14 boom done exactly what i needed thank you Google. so that's going to be 14 1.4 1. 1. 1. 1.4 times 25.4 30 35 millimeter 35 and a half we can go 35 minutes. I know a lot of people prefer inches and in the US it's more common, but I like metric better most of the time in most situations. Plus in RC it's just what we're always using. So pull first and then although I, I don't know why I closed that because I need an actual skylight now. Um, RV skylight. Now, are these in this? They obviously can't open, right? If you have a roof rack, it's just for light. Oh, that one's open. It does open. Hmm.
I guess for the people who don't opt for the full option, roof rack, pop up, tent, <laughs> you know, you'd be like, this would be the version I would buy, completely stripped down, <laughs> square door, <laughs> going the cheap way. <laughs> you get the good trailer, but you go the cheap option route. Okay, so these things look like they usually have square surrounds, but with rounded features. I'm seeing them. I'm seeing them always. Okay, we're going to just wing it. First, we're going to put some radii just because I can't stand the look of square corners. Three. And then give us some fans in them to help with airflow. Okay. So. Go negative 3.5 on that. Point 0.5 in. No, I need to go more than. I should go. Let's go two millimeters in and negative two out. That'll give me enough of a lip where I can create. Oh, 1.2 millimeters up. And we'll go negative 2.5. Three up. Now, I mean, You guys are going to have to get some uh, some opaque 3D filament to get this really functioning well. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to do I'm going to grab that. I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to experiment with something here. We're going to go up four millimeters. I'm going to do this as a new body. And then what I'm going to do is create a sketch on that side. Arc. I need to grab these so I have all of those. So I'm going to tangent there. Three. We'll make that one the same. That way, and then I need to do that same cut and rotate it this way. So I'm going to grab those profiles again. 
back to that arc. Snap to a center point, which I do not want to do. I need to draw a line across the top because since that's a curved surface, it doesn't give you that top line sometimes. So we're going to do grab those two, use the tangent, create or define our distances once more. Then I need to change that back to, not to a construction because I need it. So we've cut through that in two different ways. And I feel like that's how some of these have that that look. You can kind of see it's got that that weird shape to it with those spines. So we've done that. Now I'm going to go around and use my favorite. Uh, actually, getting rid of this. Grab these lines first. And 25. Why not? Oh, what did that where did that little line come from? Did I just create that now somehow? No. Nope. I was during this cut. Okay. Must have missed. Yep. See, I missed a little. There, I think I got it. Nope, sure didn't. Somehow I screwed up the rest of the place. Did it happen on the other side too? Should have. Oh, how annoying are you? He's selecting everything. Okay. Oh, I wonder if I can just delete that body. That I can. Nope. Darn it. <laughs> There's got to be a delete body command. Well. What I, I can just cheat and turn that body off for now. That. So I'm going to put a four millimeter radius on that. Then I'm going to combine that top with that from portion so that we have that. And then one more time. Whoop. I'm going to do a 1.5. So now we've kind of blended it all together, smoothed it all, and it looks more appropriate. And you know, of course, once you 3D print it, you're not going to have all of those lines, but it's going to look, it's going to have that more domed shape. And I'll I'll delete that little thing later. But I feel like maybe those. I went a little heavy on those. I'm going to go. There. Now it kind of gives it, because those always kind of have a little bit of that defined shape. I mean, some of these, these are like a cheap one on Amazon and they're like sharp razor points. I don't like that. I want the, I want the middle ground. And...
Yeah. I think that was a good addition. I think you're right. John says, finally something else I can use my transparent. Perfect. <laughs> Let's add a little radius on the inside. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to do is move that. And I want to grab that profile and then offset that inwards by negative. Point, uh, let's just go at 0.5. So then we can select that and pull it down two millimeter. And now we have it. That skylight will key into the main body of the camper. I know we haven't, I, I use this tool all the time, but I haven't shown it here in a while. And that's the section analysis tool. And then just select a face like this one here. And then you can cut through. So you can see what we just created with this lip. So that the that skylight sits down into our camper shell. Section analysis tool, super powerful, something that you should definitely think about using more often if you're not familiar with it. Can really help with multi piece parts and making sure things fit together and even sometimes being able to see inside of your design better. So. Now I did not make this an opening style lid, but this will be our this will be our starter one. Save. We can turn our lid back on. It's looking pretty good. Now, this one's got that front box. This one has a little a hitch, a tray hitch up there. I'm not really sure, like, I'm not sure that we would use this box for anything. I feel like we would be better off with the uh, that tray in the front because you know, you could call, you could haul around your go kart and stuff, <laughs> or or your other pointless items that we have created. Granted, we're gonna have a rack on the top. I don't know. I, someone convince me why we need this front this front thing. Otherwise, I'm gonna go with something more like that. Use drive shaft screw pins for the hinges. That's an easy. That's an easy one as well. Uh, check out Oregon Trailers Instagram. Oh yeah, they've got. They they do have some good. That's that is something. Do they have it linked at the bottom of their site? They should. They do. There we go. That's a that was a good idea. Is uh, holy, they got a lot of crap there. Scale firewood. Hey, a tipping trailer. That that could definitely be us. Uh, yeah, handles and things like that. Those are all going to be little things that we work on later. I feel like maybe. The roof rack can is is we should start throwing some of that detail on starting with that you know then we can because we have a lot of attachment points to to think about and wonder oh look at that flip out table oh it's a it's not a flip out table that's it's got those uh, accessory rails on the side where you can bring them out and and set them on there.
Yeah, front thing for for the did we do a generator? I can't remember. Seems like we should put solar panels on this. Okay. Um, let's start working on a little bit of the roof rack detail. I feel like at this point, this is, is opening up too far, but that's going to make sure, you know, since we have to redo the hinge anyway, when it normally opens up, it's not going to be quite that at that location, but that gives us a safe place to safe place. Let's, let's look at a roof rack roof. How far forward do we want to go? And nope, I'm playing a video. Don't want to do that. I'm so their standard racks, which I'm looking at in the screen you guys can't see, go. I guess it, it kind of depends. Some of these guys have the rooftop tents on them. But even so, like the, the standard brackets kind of mount just here in that radius. It's just 140 millimeters sounds like a great dimension. Go with six there. And 12 millimeters off the top, so you have plenty of room for your skylight. And then make sure from that dimension. In our final one, we could possibly work on the making a nice attachment point on the top of the rack to the to that back lid, since you know we're not going to, or you know, we could use prop rods, but we're not going to have like gas struts like a nice trailer, so or like an actual trailer. But let's just put some symmetry. These things are just a little bit wider than the trailer on these. 160 millimeters by 140 that still fits on everybody's well, I mean most people's printer I'm looking at making sure that I keep a max of 220 by 220 so that it or 200 by 220 so it fits on a basic ender 3 negative I went 2.5, I should have gone 2.4 so that it's a standard nozzle width. Right, go down four. Start with that. I am making this a, a tray, tray style rack for right now, just for visualization. I may have to raise it a little bit because we'll need the spars that go underneath. But so we're going to let's do a little bit of math first. We've got a hundred and 35.2 millimeter opening so 135.2 let's say we make the uh the slats four millimeter and then maybe eight millimeter opening so 12 divide that by 12. now that doesn't work let's see what if, what if we just do 135.2 divided by 12. 11.26 total. So if we do this at four and then we do 
11.26 total width, then we should be able to do a rectangular pattern of those items. And I think that should mean that we need to do 26 and do Eleven of them. Why does it? Oh, thirty. Negative one thirty-five point two. Ah, that didn't want to work out. Oh, that last one. Oh, because of slot on each side. Ah. Forget. Let's just do that. Um. We printed a full size LS block on it. What is that? Uh, we made it a two meter by one meter on a. Oh, God, that's a expanded printer. I've seen some, of, I've also seen these guys with the large novel printers lately, printing some stuff at crazy speeds, crazy size. So. We've got a we've got a placeholder rack in there for right now. Not likely what our final will be at all, but gives us something to look at, work off of. So we need to print, or we need to design the, the structure that's going to go around these, around the top, I guess, to, to start holding this thing as well. Going to go with the uh, slot style for mounting. Um, oh, that's a radius. Three millimeter radius is fine. Six millimeter overall. Make these at 3.2 millimeters because they'll be passed through. Ten is fine at this point at least. We'll just five there. I feel like we need to move that down a little bit. That'll be fine. So, this is going to be the mounting point for these arms. This will be a new body. Okay, I'm going to do a that. Can I, oh, I need a midpoint. I'll do that. Sorry, delete. Mm -hmm. 
going to put a point on that sketch, the midpoint of our line, because I'm going to use that to create an offset plane. Be our very last sketch. Make it visible, and then we will construct origins. That'll be our YZ, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Can I, there we go. See if it, if it give me the plane that I wanted. Sometimes it does. It isn't, definitely doesn't want, oh, it did. It's just hard to see. Okay. There we go. It never, just doesn't, uh, fusion is so weird on planes. Solid works where I'm more for, you know, a little bit more comfortable still. So much easier on planes. So we're going to make this, we're going to try and make this thing still fairly easy to print and construct. Or 2.8 so that it still has a little bit of gap, but um. I really don't like the style of that at all. These things have kind of more, more to them. We're going to roll with it for now, but I'm not happy enough with these to, to leave them. So we're just going to put them on there for now. Yes, I sufficiently hate them, but it'll give us something for the moment. Ugh. It needs a lot of everything. I don't like hardly anything about that. Okay. Little things. Anyway, we'll we'll get there. I'll add something to it to make me hate it less. Maybe it's just like a maybe it just needs cut out. Not all the way through, but construction. Just thinking something yeah this makes me hate it less at least okay there i'm done complaining about it for the meantime 
you need a 3D connection space mount. I had one of those for a while, and I just, I, it never felt as much like second nature to me as a, a mouse and as a mouse and a keyboard did. So I just, I never ended up using it. We have one at work as well, but let's see. What happens if I mirror? No, way close to the center, too close to the center, I guess. Can I, can I create a cop? Yes, I can create a copy. Perfect. Then I can mirror those to the other side. Okay. We can create connection points and all that later. Kind of knocking out these big, big portions of this at least. Uh, are those mounts going to be flesh? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm glad that I didn't finish reading your comment, Stabby Josh. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> oh, that can't be unseen though. I feel like we're knocking out the the big items on the list, other than suspension. It's still a big one. We need to we need to get a lot of that kind of knocked out. But I still I need to work on getting some of those those items here. Let's let's build the uh, before we go. I think kind of one of the last. Last things is I want to put these upper cabinets. Or do we? Do we need those? Because they're going to be completely inaccessible. We could kind of fake the look on the back side of the one that we already created for, um, you know, the, the side that you're likely to see. Um, I don't know that I really want to to go through and like take up that space. So if anything, I think that our best bet is just going to be kind of creating that look, but not but not getting the uh, this one, yeah, but not taking up unnecessary space. You guys okay with that, or do you think we should make them actual cabinets? I think if we just fake that look, it's gonna be gonna be perfect. We could make them separate doors still, you know, even if they just kind of go in place. I think, yeah. That's what we're doing. So we are going to, I'm looking at that top part. We're going to have there mean going to do it eight millimeters off the wall okay then let's just mirror that about 
point. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab that whole surface and just bring it out uh, two millimeters, new body. So I've created, I've added some thickness to it. I didn't have, an, I didn't create enough here, I think, the first time where I wanted to cut into it. So instead, I'm just going to add that thickness. Uh, then we're going to, why does it not work? Let's see. Um, that's why. Okay. It's so weird without select parts sometimes. So we've added that. Now I can make F that I want a flat screen on the wall. You can take an old phone and just you can just go ahead. Hmm. I'll make two versions. I'll make two versions of the wall. One so you can put an old phone in there and you can play your uh, fake flat screen. <laughs> and one so you can have fake cabinet doors. So I'll grab those two profiles. I'm going to offset inward negative 0.5. Okay. Same over here negative 0.5. We're going to go out two millimeters, new body. So now we'll have those fake doors that you'll, you'll print separately and then just, those will just glue on. Or we'll have the second version where you can put your old iPhone in there. I'm going to I'm going to make just like a superficial cut on this one of negative one point no negative one. Oops. Before I do that, why didn't it make that cut? So those are going to have, you know, the look of cabinet doors without glue. You're kidding. <laughs> you know, that's a really good point. Nothing else is glued. But what we could do, just because I complained about glue earlier, is this. Let's. right side let's hide our camp stove so that's obviously not important we're going to change our we're going to work off of that plane visual style shaded with hidden edges so now we know where that is slot center slot Obviously, an oversight. What I was thinking, I need to grab those profiles, line 
X destruction. Going to put wait there. Thought we were. Where'd it go away? Make sure that's even. Four millimeter radius. 15 millimeter part, perfect. And we're going to do a, we're gonna leave it just like that first. Actually, we're gonna go um, five mil. no, I'm gonna go bigger than that even. Six, no, too big, too big. That line is already in construction mode. That. I'm making a cut. I'm only going to go through. I'm only going through the wall. Because instead, we're going to add a boss that comes through, and then we're just going to bolt them in. Because that is obviously the route that we should have gone. We have a couple of ways that we could do that. I'm going to add that detail later. I'm done with that part for now. I'm going to add a boss on the back side of the uh, face of that cabinet door. Can it come through? And we're just going to put a, maybe like one or two screws in it. And they will be one of those ones that... Never mind. I'm going to do it now because now I have an idea that I like. So we're going to... P for project, grab that surface, create it in there. I'm going to offset it inwards. Negative 0.5 there. Then we're just going to do a single. I do, it's not, not quite big enough, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, calipers, I gotta confirm the screw head size of an M3 screw, button head. I think that it's like, 5.7, 5.55, and then the major OD is obviously 3 mil of an M3 screw. So I want to make those two. I want. I'm going to make it so that there's an overlapping, the head of the screw is going to overlap and hold it in place, but it's not going to do it perfectly so that you have rattly cabinet doors because 
that is what we should be worried about. If they were perfectly solid, it wouldn't be believed. You'd think they were glued in or something. Who would do that? So, now I've got that right at it. about that. Equal. Now I'm just going to match these dimensions quickly, but sideways. Okay. That is, I believe that this should equal, if you use it, so the idea will be to use M3 hardware and not cinch it all the way down. So it'll kind of, they'll kind of have a little bit of. I think the back hatch door should be held down by rare earth magnets. That's a that's a good idea. And you know, you would have to buy magnets. Maybe we can make it so that it, you know, somebody who didn't want to could wouldn't have to, but I think that rare earth magnets it would be a, a good fit in that that area. Oh. So we'll make sure we've got too many items in the way. I need to hide bodies. Yeah. Let's go 4.5. Oh, whoops. I just, I didn't do that as a new body, which they need to be. Okay. So now you'll put a set, you'll put a screw in there and that door will be able to, to move slightly. Granted, both doors will move at once, but it'll be okay. Door one. Door two. Now we have non glued in doors. All right. I think we're calling this one for the night at least. But here's the discussion that we need to have. I'm going to obviously upload the save first before we leave or before we do something bad. <laughs> the wheel man wonder just logged in. Sorry, we're just discussing wrapping up now. Um, the, of course, we're going to upload the camp stove that we did first. That is the, that's obviously what we're, the one we, we worked on tonight. You guys can print this little thing. Alex, uh, can you ban me? Why? Why are those people? What? What do they think they're accomplishing? Sorry. Anyway, sorry. Um, We'll get this thing uploaded, but the, the topic of the trailer. I don't think we need to upload anything yet. I, I just don't think we're going to change so many things. We have mounting things to add. Everything is going to change. It would be a complete waste, I think, to print any single part here. 
other than maybe those doors we just finished maybe and, you know um and maybe the skylight <laughs> like those are the only things that have the possibility of not changing i think the skylight but it's like am i going to upload a skylight i think if anything you guys should try if you want to print a skylight and transparent i think you should try and draw one you know because why not so if you guys are good with that that's what we're going to call it i'm going to get the camp stove all broken apart since there there's all is there three yeah there's the lid i gotta fix the inner the one little interference that i still have i'm gonna get that cleaned up and then get it uploaded for you guys so do you guys have anything else otherwise that's it thanks for hanging out on another sunday i appreciate it and always open to suggestions for the next one uh, is the rack separate from the main body of the stove? It is. So the rack and burners are one piece. So you print them either with this down or the other way and then just have it all print. But you'll, oh, you know what? That's one thing is that if you tried to put a screw there, you would not, you would not have a good time. So we can make them for a flathead screw, though. Just go out. 1.7 is what we need. Oops. Will it go? It won't do 1.7. 1.5. You know what? Before I before I upload it, I'm going to draw up a quickie little. Uh, set of feet for underneath it but i'm gonna do that off camera that's it for this one guys appreciate you guys all tuning in good times again i'll get these uploaded probably in the next hour so have that and you can print yourself a camp stove thanks as always guys we will see you on the next one